So today we are talking about in the beginning. So when there is a pattern in the word where I notice that there is like two things that overlap, we need to seek it out because it makes a picture. So in the beginning in Genesis 1, 1 through 5, and in the um, Gospel of John, chapter 1, 1 through 5, they're like two contrasts of the same picture. And the picture is Jesus. The picture is always Jesus. So Genesis 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So this beginning is the creation the beginning of creation and time God spoke and Jesus created so Jesus is the timeline because in Revelation 1 8 Jesus says I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end says the Lord who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty that is present past future he is the beginning of the timeline and he is the end of the timeline because the consummation of the age is with his return and then we go into the millennium kingdom so it started with jesus it ends with jesus and jesus holds it all together so in john 1 1 it says in the beginning the word was with god and the word was god so this beginning is before the beginning of time and this is what is known as eternity past so in Hebrew 7 3 it says he is without father without mother without genealogy having neither beginning of days end of life but made like the Son of God remains a priest continually so in Matthew and Luke, it starts with the genealogy. Because in Matthew, he comes like as a king, a descendant of David, the king of kings. But he has a kingdom that is not of this earth, but it's of a different world, a different time. And in Luke, he comes as a baby, and he comes as salvation. So there is a genealogy. But in John, he comes as life in us, which is God in us. So he does not come with a genealogy. Um, in Psalm 90, verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So Genesis 1 2 says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So this is a picture of the condition of the man in sin. Man, his state in sin. Because in because if you look at Ephesians 4.18, it says, Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. That is man in a state of sin, without Jesus within him, for without the forgiveness of sin. And just as the world in Genesis 1-2 was dark, and it was without form and void before the light and the life of God came, so is the state of man in his sin. And if we do not know Jesus, that's our state. And most don't even realize it because it says that we, we stumble around in the darkness and we don't even know what we stumble over. So in John 1, 2, it says he was in the beginning with God. So, there is two begotten. So, Jesus is begotten twice. So, it says, the only begotten of the Father, in John 1.14, it said, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, what, and then also, in John 3.16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he is the only begotten of the Father. That means he was begotten from eternity. 
So we are from the loins of Adam. Adam is the first created son of God formed of the dirt. And through procreation, we are sons of men, but we are not sons of God. The only way, the only um how we become son, sons of God, the children of God, is through regeneration. So Jesus is the firstborn among many brethren through resurrection. And then we are born of the Spirit through regeneration because of the resurrection. So in Acts 13.33, it said, God has fulfilled this for us their children, in that he was raised up, Jesus, as it is written in the second Psalm, which is Psalm 2-7, you are my son, today I have begotten you. This is not the same as, as for he was begotten in John 1, this is, he was begotten in resurrection, that means when he died on the cross and he rose again. We, he was the firstborn among the brethren, the firstborn from the dead. And in us believing in him, we are crucified with him, and we are raised up with him, and then we are born of the Spirit. So, Revelation, um, so in Romans 8.29, it says, For whom he foreknew. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And in Revelation 1, 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So when it talks about in Genesis 1, 2, that the earth was without form and void, so is the state of man without Jesus. When we are in our sin, we are without form and void. And the labor of the New Testament, as Paul states, he says that I labor that Christ be formed in you. So the light that came into the earth, that the earth may have form and life, so the light came into the world through Jesus Christ, that it would come into man, that we would have the form of Christ within us. This is so good. That's the word of God. <laughs> so Genesis 1-3. So then God said, let there be light and there was light so the first command to go well the first command was to go from nothing to something creation of earth for man all right so in zechariah 12 1 it says thus says the lord who stretches out the heavens lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him Isaiah 42 5 says thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it God created the earth for man and man was created for God but see, God, instead of partaking of the tree of life in the garden, he partook, which was uh, Jesus, a representation of Jesus, he to take life into his spirit because he was a living soul. Why is he created a living soul? He was created with a choice to choose God, to have the life of God in his spirit because the spirit of man is the contact with God, is through how we contact God and communicate with him. So instead of taking life into our spirit, Adam, through the tree of life, he chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which we was commanded of not to eat from because lest he surely die. Why? The knowledge of good and evil, even if it is not, even if it is good, if it's not life, it's evil. It still leads to death. Even if we think our lives are good, but if the life we have is not from Jesus, the life of God in our spirit, we're dead. We are dead. If we are, don't have spirit in our life, all we are is a living soul with a choice that's not choosing God.
Okay, so so John one three, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So Colossians one sixteen through seventeen it says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and that includes time. Hebrews 1 3, it says, He upholds all things by the word of his power. So in Genesis 1, everything was created through the word of God, and everything that is in the earth, that is in man, that is inside outside of time and and everything we know it is held together by the word of his power the word of his power is jesus because in the word is life and it is light and you cannot separate the two and where his word is there is life and there is light and god said heaven and earth can pass away but my word will never pass away all this stuff will end but the word remains and anything in one in the word and the word in us that is what makes us eternal Genesis 1 4 it says and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness in Genesis 2 9 it says and out of the ground the Lord God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to the sight and for and good for food the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so in Genesis 2 7 it says but the tree of the good knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in that day you shall truly die so there is two trees just like God just like God said he saw sunlight and it was good there was one tree that was good the tree of life and there was another tree that was bad, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So as light shone into the earth, God presented these two trees that light might shine into the spirit of man. So the tree of the knowledge of good and evil leads to death and darkness. The tree of life leads to life and light. The light in the garden was for man on earth, and the light in Jesus was for man in his spirit and soul. So within man's soul is his will to choose where he will live, in the darkness of sin or in the light of salvation. Just like we were presented with the trees in the garden, we are presented with the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ, now, in this time, in the dispensation of grace, where the light has shone in the darkness, that those who were in bondage can come out of that bondage and those who were in darkness a light has shined and that light is the salvation of Jesus Christ and that light and life that's in Jesus was in the tree of life in the garden so John 1 4 it says in him was life and that life was the light of men so first John 5 11 through 12 and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son he who has the son has life he who does not have the son of God does not have life Colossians 3 4 when Christ who is our life appears then we shall also appear with him in glory so we don't even have life we're just a living soul because to have life means life cannot be overcome by death but if we don't have the life of God in our spirit we are overcome by death that when we die we will either face eternity in darkness which is separation from God or eternity in heaven which is in everlasting light which is life with God but the reason Jesus came was to remove the judgment and the curse which was upon Adam and everyone that is born from Adam which is all of us 
and that is sin. We must repent of our sins. Jesus came that we could repent, renounce our sin, turn away everything that leads into darkness and follow him into the light because he is the light. So if we say, Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. Amen. We're still in darkness. Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you came to die on the cross for my sins. Forgive me, God. I repent of my wickedness. I repent of this, 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 and this. Forgive me, Lord. I renounce them. I separate them from me. I need you, God. I need you. Without you, I'm in darkness. Without you, I don't know where I'm going. Without you, I will never be anywhere. Without you, I am still dead. I've never been alive. But come into me. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to follow you. Reveal your word to me because your word is life. That it may come into me. That the that the form that you, Jesus Christ, may be formed in my soul. Because I no longer want to look like Adam. I no longer want to be of the loins of Adam. I don't, know, I don't want an Adamic mind, the carnal mind, the mind that is focused on my flesh and myself and a life that I want to create that no matter how big and grandiose it looks like, it leads nowhere. It's darkness. It's nothing. It's a waste. But you, if I have the mind of Christ, through the word in me that I follow after the spirit and not after the pleasure of my flesh or these fleeting things in the world that don't even lead anywhere I will have life I will have light and I will grow in the likeness of Christ the very image of God who died for me that I may have the light of life within my spirit And if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we love and follow Jesus, but we're still walking in the darkness, if we're still willingly in a life of sin, the truth isn't in us. The blood of Jesus Christ doesn't cover our sins. If the blood of Jesus Christ doesn't cover our sins, we perish. And that death is eternal because we're going to face him and we're going to stand before him. And there's two judgments. The first one, did you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes or no? The second judgment, what did you do with him? What did you do? And that can be just as serious as the first one because if we didn't do anything with him, if our life does not even look like him? Were we even in him? Paul says, or Peter says that we need to examine ourselves to be sure we're in the faith. We need to know the word of God. Because to know the word is to know Jesus. Genesis 1.5 And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So the division of night and day in the New Testament is by the light of the Lord. The division of night and day in Genesis is by the light that shone into the darkness. But the light that shone through Jesus Christ and into man, that is the division of night and day. So the light came into the world in Genesis to separate light and dark and day and night. And the light came into man and Jesus to separate light and dark and the children of the day and the children of the night. In 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5 says, You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or darkness therefore let us not sleep as others do but let us watch 
and be sober. The only way we can watch and be sober, that's just not in our body, but in our mind and our emotions by the light of Christ within us. If we don't have the light of Christ within us, no matter how much we think everything looks good, it's still darkness. It's still darkness. We can't even see. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. We walk in the light as he walked in the light. He died so that we can live through him. And Jesus says in 8.12, it says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 1.5 and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. For the darkness to not comprehend it, they totally expelled. It totally expelled. You cannot mix the two. So in the light came that we may be light. Matthew 5.14, it says, you are the light of the world. So in the beginning of Genesis, the light shone in the darkness to separate day and night, to bring light and life. In, uh, for, in John, the light shone in the darkness through Jesus Christ, that in man we may be the light of the world. The light shone in Jesus, that in Jesus receiving him, we shine that light into the world. The world is dark and it's getting darker. Though they think they can see because of the sun, but they're still in darkness. The only light by which we can see is the light within ourself. Because only in walking internally are we able to walk externally. If we're stumbling within ourselves, we're going to stumble through life even though we think we're doing okay. So the end of the story is no division. For there will be no darkness. So Genesis starts with the light and the tree of life. And ends in Revelation with the light and the tree of life. <laughs> so Revelation 22, 1 through 5, it said, And he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb, and in the middle of its street. And on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb, but the, wait, sorry, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. That's us. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Because of man's fall in Genesis, Jesus went through every human suffering conceivable so that we through him could attain life and be with him in Revelation.